This video is sponsored by Film Convert. Over the past year and a half, my goal has been to teach you guys how to color grade from scratch. But in today's video, I am super excited to bring to you guys my favorite color grading plugin and the only color grading plugin that I use in my personal color workflow, and that is Film Convert Nitrate. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use Film Convert, take you guys on a behind the scenes look on how I personally like to use Film Convert Nitrate, and then show you some of the advanced ways that you can use Film Convert to get some extra depth out of the awesome film stock presets that Film Convert has to offer. And I just so happen to get you guys an extra 10% off of their already ongoing sale. Let's go. <laughs> All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we are going to start off with the very basics with our first clip and then I'm gonna show you guys some more advanced techniques that I like to use in my own personal color grading workflow when it comes to Film Convert. So starting off with our first clip, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is open up our Open Effects panel after we have downloaded Film Convert. And then we scroll all the way down to the bottom and we see Film Convert Nitrate. We simply drag and drop that onto our first node. So as you can see off the bat, it really didn't do much except for change a few colors. That's because Film Convert works with each individual camera profile. So when we come choose camera profile, we can see here that we have a wide array of options, whether it's the Apple iPhone, which comes in a standard profile, and those Canon 1DX users out there. We even have our natural portrait and standard profiles. So you don't have to shoot log. It is designed to work with all of the camera profiles that Film Convert currently supports. So you can go to their website and download the camera pack specifically for your camera or your manufacturer's camera pack. It goes by manufacturer. So in this clip, I shot with the Urge so Mini Pro G2. So I'm going to pick 4.6K and then Film 4.6K V3 because that was the profile I shot in, their log profile. And we click apply. So what does this mean for us? This means that camera matching is now done for us with this plugin if we're using Film Convert, which means I don't have to worry about Black Magic Color Science, Sony Color Science, Canon Color Science, Red Color Science. If I choose to use all four of those in a production, Film Convert is going to work with me and not against me. So it takes off all of the camera matching that I would have to do beforehand before I would go in and grade each individual clip. So that is the awesome benefit of this system right here. So once you have selected your camera profile, we have a total of 18 film stocks, all the way from our traditional movie film stocks like the Kodak 5207 film stock or the Fuji 8543 film stock, but we also have the addition of actual photo film stocks as well. Fuji Pro 400H, Kodak Portra 400, Polaroid 600, and the Kodak Tri-X ISO 400 film. So we have all of these awesome options that we can use, even if we're trying to match our style to our photo film style as well. But for this clip, I want to use the 5213. And this is the first thing I recommend you do is choose your film stock and then go in because it will reset some of our settings like our grain curve setting, so on and so forth if we don't do that first. The next thing I like to do is then I like to come in and mess with my exposure, my temperature, my saturation. Now, the more we finagle with settings, I want us to keep in mind that we are going to move away from the faithfulness of the actual film stock, which is okay. That's what these customizations are here for, is so that everybody's just not coming out and clicking on a film stock, which you can do. You can add your own style to it as well. So I know I botched the tint here, my white balance. So I'm going to move that more to the left, add some green because it was a little too magenta. And then I just want to add some saturation until I bring out the life in our skin tones. Now that we've done those two corrections, we've chose our film stock and we've added in our saturation before and after with only a few clicks. This is why it's one of my favorite plugins. So the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust my exposure. Now I could just come in and adjust the overall global exposure, but I personally like to get a little bit more finite and I'm not personally a fan of using the levels tool in my own personal workflow. So you won't see me go too in depth with that just because I don't use it in After Effects or Premiere Pro, which is where I started learning how to color grade. I always gravitate it more towards our color curves and our color wheels. 
Now, the awesome thing about this is you can choose your poison here because these are the same tools. They're just displayed in different ways. You see here that we can adjust the luminance values of our shadows, midtones, and highlights at the bottom, and we can select a hue versus our color wheels, which the exposure goes blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, whites. So that's how we select our exposure value and how we manipulate it. And then we have the individual colors that we can use using a knowledge of color theory to mix color. Not to overcomplicate you, but whatever works for you, go ahead and use it. In this example here, I'm actually going to use my color wheels. So one of the things to note is if I go ahead and push a color purple here on the DaVinci Resolve color wheels, this is how it reacts, right? But if I push the color purple here on the film convert color wheels, it's going to react a little bit differently. And that is so that it keeps us a little bit more faithful to the film stock emulation that we're using versus just throwing the color in and DaVinci Resolve and not worrying how that would react within that film stock. So again, I'm just going to choose two colors. I always like to add blues into my shadows and highlights and then a little bit of warmth into my midtones. And so that's what we'll do here. We'll add blues into the shadows. I'm going to add some oranges into my midtones. And I'm going to add blues into my highlights. Now, this did make our image overall a little bit more brighter, at least to my eye. So I'm going to go in and correct for that. I'm going to bring down my shadows. Bring down those highlights. And I might just boost up the midtones just a bit to bring some life back into the skin. And that right there would be my final product except for my grain curve. Now, there's a reason why we have our grain response curve and our grain settings over here. Our grain response curve allows us to really customize how the grain is going to react on the image, right? So for example, if you're shooting a night scene, you may not like how strong that grain is coming off, even if it is faithful to the actual film. So you have that ability to customize it. That way it doesn't look like you simply underexpose your image. So I think I want to increase my grain strength here because I love, I love grain. And I want to increase my grain size, make it a little bit rougher. Maybe just bring up the grain saturation just a bit. But now I can come in and clean up my skin tones. So I can take it out of the shadows and I can take it out of the mid-tones and I can leave it more so just in the highlights. And you see how intuitive that is. If I push it up in the shadows, then oh wow, we get a whole bunch of a whole bunch of grain here. And as you can see, as I increase the grain saturation, we get a little bit more of those artifacts there. We bring that back down to where I had it. And then if we bring it back down, so very intuitive on how we use this. And this is where I would stop. Before and after, awesome color grade on this image overall. And I just couldn't be more pleased. It's a very intuitive way to get really polished imagery with a plugin. Now let's say you want to get a little bit more advanced. So this image right here is an example of one of my favorite ways to use Film Convert. This is from my upcoming short film, which I haven't released, so you guys are getting a behind the scenes on that. But the purpose of this is that I'm going to use Film Convert to enhance what I've already graded. I've taught you guys how to do all of this stuff. We've started with a basic log correction. So here's our log. And then we do an exposure correction for that. And then we key out our skin tones. And then we add our teals to our midtones and use a layer mixer to layer my skin tones on top of all of that to give us a nice teal and orange look. So here is the secret on how we add Film Convert to that. I started out in Node 4 and then I simply added nodes before Node 4 to do all of my grading because Node 4 is an sRGB color space transform. That allowed me to see everything but just simply work in a different color space because I'm going to apply Film Convert and when it comes up you can see that the profile is in standard sRGB. Now first of all, let's just talk about that. We've added a whole new depth to the image with just Film Convert. So what I've really done here is I've graded the image on how I want my scene to look, and then I let Film Convert interpret how that would look with the film stock applied to it. And this is the awesome part, because my favorite film stock with this scene is Kodak Portrait 400, because it adds just this nice moodiness, the green tones and the shadows on this rainy day really sells this look for me. And that's exactly what I was going for. Something a little bit more emotional, something a little bit more key, low key, which is awesome. So what we're going to do here in this film convert 
tab, we're going to go back to our open effects overlay. And just so that it's not overpowered with grain, this is where this grain response curve is awesome. I can bring down the grain in the shadows just a bit and leave it in the midtones and highlights so that my skin tones aren't clouded. And so we go from our before to our after. And that is just a powerful tool to have on top of our color grading knowledge. One more example of this is going to be this scene that I've already, again, done our log correction for, but it was shot on a vintage lens. So you can see what I mean here. I have a color space transform node that brings us into sRGB, and then I just add a serial before that so I can grade my log image from this to this. So we were using a vintage lens, and it has this really, really cyan tone to it, which would be awesome if we wanted to leave that there, but that's not really my taste. So I'm just gonna correct this out here real quick by using my curve, and I know it's the cyan tone because I'm looking at my curves tool right here, and I can see that it's my reds that are out of whack. Everything else is pretty much chill, but my reds are just a little bit out of whack. So I'm gonna come into my red curve here. I'm just gonna bump up the reds until it matches a little bit more with everything else. And that right there is really where I want it. So again, a before and an after. Now we can add a node after our sRGB conversion. And here we are in Film Convert. Before, after. If this does not fit the vintage aesthetic of the car, I don't know what is. But it's just all around a nice look. Off the bat, I really don't feel the need to pull any of the grain, but I think I will just in the midtones a bit and in our shadows, just a bit, not too much. I'll leave it in the highlights, just so it's not overpowering. And this is a prime example. As we go through this clip, everything looks amazing. And I can add in a little bit of saturation too. Overall, great imagery. So just some examples on how we can use Film Convert standalone we can actually grade our entire image and enhance it with Film Convert, or we can go in and do some tweaking of our image beforehand to correct something deeply embedded, like an actual lens defect, or I guess it was, it was just more lens characteristic, and then add Film Convert too. As you guys saw in the beginning of this video, yes, this is a sponsored video, but I wanna give you guys a quick statement of transparency. I am not bringing a plugin to you guys that I do not personally use in my own color grading workflow. This is a plugin that I 100% stand by, and that the industry really stands behind as well. It's such a great, versatile tool to have in your arsenal. And I truly think that if there is one plugin that has to do with color grading that I could bring to you, it would be this one. With that said, thank you so much Film Convert for sponsoring my channel and for supporting my audience with that discount code. If you guys want that extra 10% off of their already ongoing sale, the link is in the description down below. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The link is in the description down below as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. Stay tuned because I have one more Film Convert video coming for you guys on an awesome technique that I'm so excited to share. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.